Hey good people, hola mi gente. Welcome back to another Vlogmas video. I actually went to go see The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes today. So I'll be having a video soon discussing the book versus adaptation, but that's not what we're doing right now. Right now, we are going to answer the discussion questions for The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the book. So let's get into it. All right, question number one. Which character in this book most exemplifies the philosophy of Thomas Hobbes that all humans are essentially selfish and need a strong central government? So early on, this is definitely Dr. Gall who most exemplifies it. From the start, she makes it clear that that's her position and this is why we need to have the Hunger Games and why it must never die. But then other characters also show this as well. We see that a bit in both Father and Son Snow. So Coriolanus and his father. Question two. Which characters develop that belief through the events of the story? So it is more solidified for Coriolanus Snow. Like I say, he already is toying with it a little bit, but he's uncertain because of his feelings for Lucy Gray and then also his experiences with the other tributes. But as things progress throughout the work, this definitely becomes something that he believes firmly and concretely. Question three, which characters believe, as John Locke did, that humans should all be treated equally for the common good? How do these characters act as a result of their beliefs? So we have three. We have Sejanus, we have Ma, and we have Lucy Gray. So Sejanus is really advocating and really pushing that the game should end, that it's not fair, that tributes are human and should be treated as such. We have Ma, who is really advocating for her son and his protection, even though they're no longer in District 2 and she doesn't want to be in District 1, but she wants them all to be safe. And then we have Lucy Gray, who, you know, is like, I'm Covey and doesn't really identify with this whole idea of capital and tributes and wants everyone to be treated justly and really approaches everyone with a more flirtatious, jovial nature. So those are the three. Four, do you think the decisions they make are evil or necessary? Do you think they believe their actions are evil or necessary? That's such an interesting question for something to be evil or necessary. If we're talking about the decision to have the Hunger, the hunger Games, that's evil. If we're talking about what people do as a means to survive them, I would say that's necessary. So how do they feel? They probably feel a mixture of both, right? If you're someone who's participating in the games and you take someone's life, that probably doesn't feel good. And prior to the games, you probably think of that as being conducive or equal, equivalent to evil. But when you're here and you're in survival mode, you feel as if you are trying to save your life and trying to stay alive, so your positioning probably changes. Five. Discuss how the Mary Shelley quote about the creature created by Dr. Frankenstein relates to the characters in this book. Which of them had the promise of virtues destroyed by the loathing and scorn that were manifested toward them? I'm one because they all of the tributes, right? Like the hatred toward them, they didn't choose to be in the arena, they didn't choose to be in the Hunger Games. So the hate from the capital definitely impacts them and is manifested towards them. We also see that with Coriolanus Snow and Dean Highbottom, right? Coriolanus's life is significantly altered for a period of time um, because of the hatred that Dean Highbottom has for him. Six, do you believe that people can become monsters through the way they are treated by others? Absolutely. I don't think there's a monster that has existed that wasn't made, right? Or that wasn't created based on the actions or lack thereof that they received by the individuals in their lives at one point or another. Seven. 
Compare the family backgrounds of Coriolanus and Sejanus. How do their childhood experiences affect how each feels about the capital, the Hunger Games, and being mentors to the tributes? So Coriolanus is someone who was bred from wealth for positions of power and authority. Sejanus is someone who was originally in District 2, so he was in the districts. He had that type of upbringing, right? So even though he was in one of the more wealthier districts, there's still this very capital versus district mentality. And as we see throughout the Hunger Games, Sejanus very much still identifies as someone who belongs in District 2. He doesn't feel as if he belongs in the capital. He doesn't feel as if he's a part of the capital. He understands his position. He understands that it's his father's money that is even allowing him access. Their upbringings definitely directly impact the way in which they both approach the Hunger Games. In the end, Coriolanus becomes even more embedded into the social structure and ideology of the capital while Sejanus stays truer to his roots as well and completely goes against it. So in the end, they're both honestly staying true to some of their core values from their childhood. Eight, describe Lucy Gray Bard's appearance at the reaping and why it has the effect it does on the audience in District 12 and the capital. In what ways does she represent the quotation from Wordsmith, sweet is the lore which nature brings? So, you know, in District 12, it's kind of grim, you know, it's cold. So a lot of like ash and things in the air and it's landing on folks. So that's usually the appearance, but she comes out, she's bright, she's colorful in more ways than one, her actual outfit, but then also her personality that is shining through. And so when it says like sweet is the Lord which nature brings, she has that sweetness and she's able to captivate folks with her charisma, with her appearance, and just the way in which she carries herself and interacts with the audience. Nine, why does Coriolanus decide to meet the train that brings the tributes to the capital and why does he stay with the tributes? Describe the ways that he is influenced by Lucy Gray and how she responds to him. What makes Lucy Gray believe him to be trustworthy? Why does he betray that trust? Does he betray that trust? So he meets her there because he wants to make an, a great initial impression. He wants her to trust him. He needs her in order to win the Hunger Games and therefore win the scholarship so that he can attend university. So that is his first step at being manipulative to get him to get her on his side. Why does he stay? Again, same reason, to establish that trust factor. What makes Lucy Gray believe him to be trustworthy? I think the feeling that she has from him, but then also his sincerity and him showing up and him staying, and just the conversations that they're able to have initially, there's a degree of trust there. But also, she doesn't have anyone in the capital. In the capital. She needs to be able to trust someone. So I also think that there is a degree of desperation there. And so there's leeway for him to like have more trust than she may have given him otherwise. And does he betray that trust? In the end, yes, but it's it's a curious, it's a curious scene because the, the answer inevitably is yes, but is, has he gone mad? Is what's happening what he believes to be happening? It's quite interesting, that last uh, bit in the book, where it's like, we're not 100% sure that it's happening the way that he believes it to be happening. But then things line up where it's, the possibility is there. So it's really unclear, 10. How do Coriolanus's and Lucy's views of human nature influence the way they see each other, their communities, and the decisions they make? So Coriolanus is very much being shaped by Dr. Gall and the Capitol that humans at the core naturally are animalistic, need order, need control. Lucy Gray is someone who is covey and they've gone from place to place singing, moving around as they will, interacting with different folks. So there is a liberation within her that Coriolanus does not have. And for a while, you know, they try to find that common ground within each other and build that trust and that connection. But in the end, there's just too much tension. 
those are the core ones that I wanted to come on here and discuss for this vlogmas just to share some more about the book with you all my book versus adaptation video will be up on the channel soon so please keep an eye out for that that is it for me today until the next one as always I am Ms. Malcolm Hughes one who believes that books are sometimes better than people please remember to give time time to be kind to each other to have the very best day of your life on purpose Peace, odabo, adios, ciao, and happy Vlogmas.